Long ago, the sky and stars were the focal points where humanity gazed with anticipation, entrusting their fate to the gods since ancient times. From the era when fire was used to ward off wild beasts and sticks for hunting and gathering, humans have pondered over distant nebulae, wondering about their origins. Yet, little did anyone know that after more than 40,000 years of existence, Homo sapiens had evolved to a level where they could delve into the roots of the universe. Humanity's journey began tentatively, with Galileo's astronomical lens, leading to the monumental presence of James Webb in space a decade ago. Hubble and the Big Bang Theory were once hailed as the pinnacle of discovery. However, ten years later, this knowledge began to crumble under the weight of new evidence from James Webb. As an intelligent audience, one may wonder whether to cling to the past and uphold long-standing hypotheses or embark on an adventure to a new horizon, where all knowledge is challenged and transformed. James Webb, representing all of humanity, scribes an epic ode to the cosmic journey, welcoming us to Ice 200M, where thrilling adventures commence with boundless knowledge. But why does humanity need an astronomical instrument like James Webb? Astronomical telescopes, like the human eye, have limited visibility. Their structures are intricate, yet they operate on a common principle, to peer back into the early stages of the universe and witness the first twinkling stars. This endeavor requires a mirror so vast and smooth that if it were the size of a continent, it would have no hills or valleys higher than the base of the foot. Only such a mirror can collect and focus the faint light from the farthest galaxies, revealing them as they appeared in the ancient past. However, the light from these distant stars, after traversing billions of years through expanding space, has been stretched into infrared radiation, akin to heat. To observe these primordial stars, a telescope with a large, cold mirror must be launched into space. James Webb, the perfect heir to its predecessors, has unveiled the existence of stars, galaxies, and supermassive black holes far earlier in the universe's history than previously imagined. With each new observation, it challenges existing theories, paving the way for a deeper understanding of cosmic phenomena. JWST's observations have surprised astronomers, revealing a plethora of young and hungry black holes, challenging established theories about the cosmos. As astronomers grapple with this influx of data, James Webb continues to rewrite the narrative of our universe, serving as a cosmic time machine, peering deeper into the fabric of space-time than ever before, forming in the first billion years of the universe out of approximately 13.8 billion years of its history. Early observations from the telescope last summer hinted at a universe filled with astonishingly evolved galaxies. But the information astronomers can gather from such images is limited. To truly understand the early universe, astronomers not only need images, they crave the spectra of those galaxies, data obtained when the telescope separates light into specific colors. The spectra of galaxies that just began sending back in earnest at the end of last year are invaluable for two reasons. Firstly, they allow astronomers to determine the age of the galaxy. The infrared light collected by JWST here is red or redshifted, meaning that as it travels through the universe, its wavelength is stretched due to the expansion of space. The degree of this redshift allows astronomers to determine the distance of a galaxy and consequently pinpoint the time it initially emitted light. Nearby galaxies have red shifts nearly zero, JWST can easily generate objects exceeding a red shift of five, corresponding to about one billion years after the Big Bang. Objects with higher red shifts will be older and much farther away. Secondly, spectra help astronomers understand what is happening within a galaxy. Each color marks the interaction between photons and specific atoms or molecules. One color may originate from a hydrogen atom flickering as it settles after a collision, another signifies oxygen atoms being pushed, and yet another represents nitrogen. The spectrum is a color pattern that reveals the composition of a galaxy and the factors at play, providing unprecedented context for galaxies at distances never seen before. Ayash Saxa, an astronomer at the University of Oxford, says, we have taken a big leap. In fact, we are talking about the chemical composition of nine redshifted galaxies, which is entirely remarkable. Galaxy spectra also serve as the perfect tool to identify the main disruptor, massive black holes lurking at the centers of galaxies. The black holes themselves are dark, but when they consume gas and dust, they tear apart atoms, emitting various colors. Long before JWST was launched, Astronomers hoped that the telescope would help them discover these patterns and find enough of the largest and most actively feeding black holes in the early universe to unravel the mysteries of their formation. James Webb unveils a mystery from 20 years ago. 
The mystery began over two decades ago when a team led by Fan discovered one of the farthest galaxies ever observed, a brilliant quasar intricately linked with a supermassive black hole in vigorous operation, weighing possibly billions of suns. It had a redshift of 5, corresponding to about 1.1 billion years after the Big Bang. With subsequent surveys of the distant sky, Fan and his colleagues consistently shattered their own records, pushing the redshift boundary of the standard candle to 6 in 2001, finally to 7.6 in 2021, merely 0.7 billion years after the Big Bang. The challenge lies in the seemingly implausible creation of such massive black holes in the history of the universe. Like any object, black holes need time to develop and form. Akin to a toddler suddenly growing to a height of 6 feet, Fan supermassive black holes are too large for their age. The universe isn't sufficiently large for them to accumulate billions of suns in weight. To explain these excessively massive youngsters, physicists are compelled to consider two uncomfortable options. The first scenario involves Fan's galaxies initially containing numerous standard black holes with masses approximately equal to stars, often left behind by supermassive explosions. Subsequently, they grow by merging and consuming gas and dust in their vicinity. Typically, if a black hole attacks vigorously enough, a radiation stream will push its debris far away. This prevents ravenous consumption and sets a speed limit for the black hole's growth known as the Eddington limit. But it's a soft ceiling, a continuous dust stream can override the radiation emission. However, it's challenging to imagine sustaining such super Eddington growth long enough to account for fans behemoths. They would have to grow at an unimaginable rate. Alternatively, perhaps black holes could be born with sizes so large it's almost unbelievable. Gas clouds in the early universe may have collapsed directly into black holes weighing thousands of suns, creating objects known as heavy seeds. This scenario is also hard to accept because such massive compact gas clouds would collapse into stars before forming black holes. One of JWST's priorities is to assess these scenarios by looking into the path of Fan and capturing the fainter ancestors of Fan's galaxies. These predecessors are not entirely pristine, they are galaxies with slightly smaller black holes on the path to becoming pristine. With JWST, scientists have the best chance to discover black holes that haven't started growing yet, objects young and small enough for researchers to determine their infant weights. That's why a group of astronomers from the Cosmic Evolution Early Released Science Survey, series, led by Dale Cucci of Colby College, started working overtime when they first noticed signs of such young black holes appearing in the days after Christmas. Jan Kalip, an astronomer at the Rochester Institute of Technology, wrote, It's impressive how many of them exist. These black holes are too large and growing too fast. In the Sears spectrum, some galaxies immediately reveal and likely harbor tiny black holes. These small monsters, unlike their more discrete counterparts, these galaxies emit light not just in a distinct shadow for hydrogen, instead, the hydrogen lines blur or spread into multiple colors, indicating that some light waves are compressed as the gas clouds accelerate towards the Joe, similar to an ambulance approaching, emitting an increasingly high-pitched siren as the sound waves are compressed while other lines stretch as the clouds move away. Kevy and his colleagues know that a black hole is almost the only object capable of ejecting hydrogen in such a way. Kevy said, the only way to see the wide component of the gas swirling around the black hole is if you look straight into the center of the galaxy and straight into the black hole. At the end of January, the Sears team attempted to draft a description of two of the hidden small monsters, as they call them. After that, the team began systematically researching a broader range, including hundreds of galaxies. Their program collected to see how many black holes are out there but they were beaten to it by another team led by Wishi Hurricane at the University of Tokyo just a few weeks later. Hurricane's team searched for the farthest 185 Sears galaxies and Saxon said all of these advancements have occurred in the first 9 to 12 months now we have a host aid for the next 9 or 10 years everything will gradually become clearer and humanity is officially embarking on the exploration of the high level Universe congratulations on reaching the end of today's video goodbye and see you in the next videos.